Good evening, folks. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to an old Cyclone Chaser's current Cyclone update to the public. Today, the 27th of January, 2017. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Folks, the tropical low that is in question is just up here. You can generally see that broad circulation or broad turning associated with that system. It's going to track in a, ge in a general west-southwest direction over the next 24, 48, 72 hours parallel to the coast and offshore. Now the expectation is that while you may see some gusty thunderstorms, you won't get to the worst of this system. The worst of this system is expected to get into category two level intensity once it's uh, around about to the north of Exmouth or perhaps slightly to the north northwest of Exmouth. As you can see in the error margin below on the OCC weather map here, you've got the error margin just north of the coastline. So places like Barrow Island, of course, need to be aware that if the system did track a little bit further southwards, then of course you're going to see some stronger winds than currently expected. You can see these fast moving showers and storms developing all the way down towards the Gascoigne coastline and good little steering level flow here which is dragging them onto the coast too. So they are expected to be fairly gusty, fairly squally and the opportunity of course as we know for those isolated weak tornadoes inside those squall lines particularly to the southeast of the circulation centre. So for Port Hedland, I guess the, uh, the interesting time could be this evening and overnight tonight. Very similar track forecast on the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre. The Joint Typhoon Warning Centre now calling this tropical cyclone O3S in Australia once it becomes a tropical cyclone. So the standards here between the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre and the Australian bomb are a little different. The JTWC has a weaker standard for a tropical cyclone. The bomb has a stronger standard for a tropical cyclone. Uh, generally, the system tracking west-southwest offshore, but you can see that error margin, and that's the biggest thing here, is if that system ad adopts this slightly more southward uh, version of this track, uh, the expectation is that we might see enhanced activity on that coastline uh, in terms of some stronger winds than currently forecast. Excellent model agreement here on the west-southwest forecast. Look at that beautiful little narrow mar margin of error there. Uh, but as I say, if the, any of these more southward options are adopted, then of course the impact on the coast is heightened. If a more northward option is adopted, then we're still probably likely to see some fairly gusty showers and storms regardless on the coastline. The system currently packing its strongest winds in the southern semicircle, so you can see here that there's a bit of a complex structure occurring with this system at the moment, uh, a couple of multiple circulation centres. Now obviously the one that we're watching in particular is this more southern one, and the expectation here that we're getting up to 34 knots sustained winds now at 10 metres above sea level. You can see Karratha is about the edge of that stronger wind, so once we get west of Karratha that wind hasn't quite got there yet, and up through Port Hedland here, where we're seeing currently uh, winds of around 15 to 20 knots on the on the coastline. As we move into tonight, you can see that the low pressure system moves westwards and uh, westwards fairly rapidly. Now, because we've got multiple vortices with regards to this low, so the circulation center is a, is very hard to pinpoint. There could be a secondary vortex that develops here to the south, and if that was to be the case, then we'll see a big increase in winds just offshore overnight tonight and one of the good things about this computer model compared to most of the others is that it does tend to do quite well with these multi-vortex type uh, low pressure systems the real complex weak cyclones that uh, can develop secondary wind maximums and the model while it says that the low pressure or the cyclone itself will be well to the north here uh, there is that opportunity for a secondary vortex to form overnight tonight and enhance the winds near the coastline so you've got 20 to 25 knot winds now uh, all the way through to Karratha. So it's a real complicated setup this afternoon, this evening and overnight tonight, folks, as to this tropical cyclone, because what's, uh, what we're expecting to see is, yes, a stronger circulation centre to the north, but even a weak circulation to further to the south of the system is going to enhance that, that wind, uh, wind regime further to the south here near the coast. And so uh, look at this wind also. I want to draw your attention to this wind. Once the system pushes away to the west of a particular location, notice the winds here are coming in from the north to northeast. Now that's going to drive sea levels up just a little bit. Not We're not talking about a significant storm surge, but we are talking about a high tide that might be, you know, 20, 30 centimetres uh, or maybe even up to half a metre uh, above what it's supposed to be. So 
just be aware there that if you are, we well, shouldn't be out on the water, but if you are in low-lying areas, that the uh, normally high tides are a possibility overnight tonight and into early tomorrow, especially once you are east of the circulation centre. So notice here that tomorrow morning the circulation centre appears to start consolidating and uh, the expectation also that we're starting to see some stronger winds associated with it, 35 to 40 knots now, getting up into the high high end range of category one to the west or to the northwest of Karatha and those winds driving onto the coast here at 25 to 30 knots with obvious gusts. Now, folks, just bear in mind that I'm talking to you here in terms of sustained winds. Uh, obviously, when we're talking about gusts, we need to be aware that they can be a fair bit higher than that. If we look at the gusts around the place, you could see gusts getting up to about 40 to 50 knots. And so that's why the Bureau of Meteorology has a cyclone warning out for this area is because if we see gusts getting up into that 40 to 50 knot range, so we're looking at 90 to 100 kilometre an hour sort of wind gusts occurring in general, in general squally 30 knot conditions, not going to be a fun time. As we move into uh, tomorrow afternoon, you can see still a complex little circulation occurring through here and uh, pushing, continuing to push to west towards the west southwest off the coast of WA. Now, with regards to rainfall from this. You'll tend to see the heaviest rain going through the region once the system is to your northwest. So once the system's to your northwest, you're getting this nice little northerly flow from the deep tropics of Indonesia and Timor. And what's going to happen is as that air comes in and squeezes together, uh, you're going to see some heavy falls, particularly right on the coastal fringe here around the central and eastern parts of the Pilbara. And that will extend westwards as the low pressure system or the cyclone continues to move westwards. So too will that heavy rain. There'll still be some showers on the coastline and still showers and storms developing inland in a very moist and unstable airstream. But be, be particularly aware of that heavy potential rainfall anywhere from anywhere east of Karatha at this stage, not Karatha itself, anywhere east of Karatha probably going to see the heaviest stuff overnight tonight and into early tomorrow and once that northerly kicks in here and brings in so much of that tropical moisture. So you can see that rainfall for tomorrow from 4am onwards. Uh, the expectation is it's going to be very coastal. That heavy stuff is going to be very, very coastal. And it's going to be primarily east of Karatha at this stage. And obviously offshore with the circulation centre being offshore too. Uh, some gusty storms continuing tomorrow for the Gascoigne and the inland parts of the Pilbara. As we go into Sunday quickly, we can have a look at... This, uh, this activity starting to die off. But still, because we're left with this northerly flow, still very moist, still quite unstable, going to continue to see some showers, possibly some uh, storm activity all the way through the Pilbara into Sunday as well. If you like these updates, folks, uh, consider becoming a subscriber, ozcyclonechasers.com.au. You'll access a whole bunch of weather graphics similar to the ones I've shown you. You'll be supporting our documentary efforts and you'll be gaining much more comprehensive updates and far more frequently. Thanks for watching this update. I'll have another one for you tomorrow night. Or if you're, if you're a subscriber, you'll get one tomorrow morning looking at specific towns, Port Hedland, Karatha, Onslow and Exmouth. Have a good night. Stay safe. Enjoy the wind and enjoy the rain.